Hello everyone. Now we are going to understand and learn sexual reproduction in plants. So in plants, the main part of the plant which performs the reproduction is called as beta flower. So flower is the structural and functional unit of sexual reproduction in plant. Okay, flower is the structural and functional unit of sexual reproduction in plant. It consists of four walls. Walls means the part. Okay, and what are these four parts? They are called as calyx, corolla, androsium, and gynosium. Androsium and gynosium are the essential walls, means essential part, because androsium produces male germ cell and gynosium produces the female germ cell. They are, they are arranged in a sequence from outside to inside. As you can see here in hibiscus flower right in front of you, this is called as beta sepal or it is called as calyx. Okay, it supports the flower. Here we have petals. They are colorful petals or they are also called as corolla. They are responsible to like attract insect for the pollination. Okay. And here we have the, you know, the female reproductive organ called ovary, okay? It is called as beta gynosium. It includes three parts, ovary, then we have style and a stigma, okay? This combinedly called beta gynosium. And for male germ cell, we have anther, okay? Anther and the filament that combinedly called androsium. They combine like anther and filament combinedly called androsium and they are responsible for producing the male germ cell of the flower. Understood everyone? So yes, here, sir. calyx, here that calyx means sepals and corolla only helps in reproduction. They help only. That's why they are called as accessory walls. They are called as accessory walls. But like androsium and gynosium, this androsium and that one gynosium are responsible for sexual reproduction. That's what they are called as essential walls. They are called as beta essential walls. Understood, everyone? Yes. Understood or still any doubt here? Understood, sir. Okay. <laughs> so we had we have divided this four part of the flower into essential and accessory. Essential means gynosium and endosium and accessory means sepals and petals. Okay, now next. The flower is called bisexual. Why bisexual? Because in the same flower, we are having male as well as female reproductive organ. Okay, like endosium and gynosium, both are present in same flower. That's why they are called as beta bisexual flower. Example is hibiscus. Example is hibiscus. <clears throat> okay. And some plant having different flower, like one flower contain male part, other will contain female part. Okay. Like endosium is on another flower and gynosium will be on another flower. These flower are called as unisexual flower. Uni means one. Here by means two. Okay, example we have papaya. Okay, so just do remember papaya flower are unisexual beta. Okay, so as you can see here, if you will observe that, that will be the female flower, and like this flower of papaya are the male flower. So here we have separate flower have like a separate a reproductive organ, that's what they are called as unisexual flower. So understood what is bisexual and unisexual? Yes, sir. Okay. And example also, just do remember, for hibiscus, it is bisexual okay. and for papaya, it is unisexual flower. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Many flower have stuck to support the flower and which is called as beta pedicle. Okay, as you can see here, this is part, okay, which is directly attached to the branch. That part support the flower, hence, okay, 
and it is being attached with the branch okay in order to supply proper nutrition okay this is called beta pedicle it is called as pedicle okay and such flower are called as pediculate so those flower they are attached with the branch with the help of pedicle are called as pediculate whereas flower without stalk are called as acels so very important again two things here acels and pediculate or pedicellate pedicellate mean flower with pedicle and flower without stalk or the pedicle is called as acels okay androecium is the male whorl okay and gynoecium is the female whorl of the flower so male whorl and the member are called as beta stamen and for gynoecium it is called as carpel so carpel is the female and the stamen is the male part of the flower member of the gymnosium what is gymnosium and gynoecium no no uh, gymnosium any idea about gymnosium sir the carpels no 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 uh, sorry it is gynoecium okay yeah 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 so member of the gynoecium are called as carpel yes their member is what suppose i am just drawing here like this okay so the top most part is called as okay this is called as stigma this is style and this is ovary okay this is called as ovary these may be separate or united okay they may be separate or united ovary is present at the base as you can see here this is the ovary and which is present at the base of the flower okay it is and uh, the hollow style hollow means here it is like pipe like structure because when pollen grains falls here they starts germinate and pollen tube grows from the style towards the ovary okay <clears throat> the style which is the hollow comes up to the ovary and stigma is present at the tip of the style so as you can see this is the style and at the tip of the style we have stigma ovary contain one or many ovules okay that ovary may contain one or many ovules here embryo sac is formed in each ovule by the meiosis okay so meiosis again it is a type of cell division where diploid cell gives haploid cell okay understood Two yes. n cell gives n cells. Yes, in case of plant also, each embryo sac consists of the haploid axle. See, haploid means again having half the number of chromosome, and cell with two haploid cell are haploid polar nuclei. So in you like ovary, we have like ovary structures like this. So here we have haploid cell, and here again two polar nuclei. Very important. that uh, haploid cell the egg cell will form the seed and that uh, secondary nucleus secondary nucleus will form it a endosperm and endosperm is very important because it provide nutrition during the germination of seed now pollen grains form anther are transmitted to the stigma this process is called as beta pollination what is pollination pollination is the process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma okay it is called as pollination very important this is called as pollination what is pollination the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is called as pollination what is pollination transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is called as pollination understood everyone Yes. yes yes and pollination occurs with the help of by bi a biotic agent like wind water etc as well as with biotic agents like insect and other animals okay and insects are very important for the pollination stigma becomes sticky okay during the pollination and pollen germinates okay suppose here we have beta stigma see here that pollen grains we have here okay 
so that stigma becomes very sticky in order to provide nutrition for the germination of pollen grains okay when they fall upon uh, such sticky stigma okay a long pollen tube and the two male gametes are formed so as you can see here that start germinating like this as you can see here this is the pollen tube which is formed and two pollen see they are the male gametes okay as you can see here here we have the first and here we have the second male gamete they are tra like uh, traveling from an uh, pollen grain towards the ovary through the pollen tube okay and they release releases finally in, near the egg cell so that they can fertilize easily the pollen tube carries male gamete and pollen tube reaches the embryo sac via the style okay so via style with the help of that uh, pollen tube this male germ cell releases towards the ovary tip of the pollen tube burst okay when pollen tube reaches here the tube like tip suppose here we have the pollen tube like this and when pollen grain reaches here that re burst from here okay and then pollen grains or the male germ cells releases near the ovary <clears throat> okay next burst and two male gametes are released in the embryo sac one male gamete unites with egg cell and forms zygote and then zygote develop into seed okay everyone yes yes, yes. it means uh, we can say embryo it develops into embryo embryo means from where the plant will germinate and this is called beta fertilization it is called as fertilization second male gamete unites with two polar nuclei and form endosperm will form endosperm and endosperm will provide nutrition to the developing embryo during the during the germination of seed okay so this form okay endosperm is formed and which is again responsible for the providing nutrition during the germination of seed as two nuclei participates in this process that's why it is called as double fertilization okay in one first fertilization embryo is formed through the zygote and in second endosperm is formed so two time fertilization takes place that's why it is called as beta double fertilization most of the time question is being asked that explain the double fertilization in sexual reproduction in plant okay so you had to explain both the fertilization here okay okay yeah so here we have the egg cell okay so egg cell always present here if suppose we uh, have the gram seed you know the gram seed so you will see here here one like uh, diff structure is present where embryo is present embryo and that like pulses or the seed okay it is called beta endosperm okay so the and top it, white part is present there yes embryo okay and it is covered with the seed coat okay seed coat seed coat and seed coat endosperm and embryo combinedly called seeds seed okay next so here very important thing is given for the pollination when pollination involves only one flower or two flower of the same plant then it is called as beta self pollination it is called as self pollination whereas if pollination occurs okay or involves two flower or uh, born on the two plant of the same species species must be the same okay but maybe flower from the different plant is called as cross pollination is called as cross pollination while discovering the new high yielding and resistance variety of the plant scientists bring about the pollination with the help of brushes okay bristles with the help of bristles they are transferring pollen grains 
from anther to stigma okay in order to form the new variety of plant okay scientists used to transfer pollen grains from anther to stigma with the help of bristles okay everyone i hope you understood what is cross and self pollination yes sir yes now we are going to understand about the germination of seed again it is very important take us uh, oh, over here uh, it is given one like activity take a suitable glass vessel like conical flask or beaker add some garden soil in it and so some pulse grain in it in such a way that you can observe them through the glass okay that must be transparent parent and just uh, put seeds near the like uh, surface area so that you can watch the growth of root okay and shoot during the germination water it every day and record the changes ovule develop into the seed and ovary into the fruit okay ovary forms the fruit and the ovule which is double fertilized form the seed okay after the fertilization seed falls upon the ground okay when fruits break up and they germinate in the soil under the favorable condition favorable condition is for temperature and moisture okay zygote develops at the cost of food storage in the endosperm of the seed and thus new plantlet is formed so when embryo develops into the seed uh, plant that time endosperm provide nutrition because that particular time that seed are not going to perform photosynthesis do they no na no yeah. yes oh, so that time that endosperm provide nutrition to them and once that becomes green and started starts performing photosynthesis they do not require food from the nutrition uh, that endosperm okay and this is the way how plant germinates this is called as yes. seed germination yes i have a doubt yeah yes yes please. what will happen with the endosperm after uh, its food is exhausted and See, the food uh, the plant no longer needs it it undergo decay decomposition okay sir so it falls down and decays yes yes the remaining part okay, okay. so here we have completed the sexual reproduction in plants also any doubt here no sir not a doubt